Whether you visit our many historic sites, explore our thousands of acres of parks, launch a business, or study at one of our acclaimed universities, you'll agree, Mercer County has it all. Mercer County, picture yourself here. Mercer County Executive Brian Hughes and the Board of Commissions are proud to sponsor Mercer Local Influencers. Presenting Mercer Local Influencers, featuring leaders in our community whose positive influence is bringing energy growth and vitality to Mercer County. Presented by YourTownTube.com, FitFeb and WellTube, and Stimulus Brand. Good day, Mercer County. My name is John Gertica, host of Mercer Influencers, and the show about individuals and their spaces and places and the things that are special about Mercer County. I am excited to have our two guests today. Uh, they have made places and spaces that are very special for a number of people, uh, not just here in Mercer County, but um, also in Monmouth County. I'd like to welcome Raul and Carlo Momo. Guys, thanks for coming in today. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Yeah, for oh, sure. Happy to be here. Sure. Well, I am so excited to talk to you about your roots because we spoke earlier. You and I both went to the same university. It was a college at the time you were there, but yeah. it overlapped <laughs> that time that I was there. So right. I said, I say university. Yeah. So yeah. great, great time in Philly there. Um, and um, Raul, you did Rutgers University, so yes. you're homegrown here in New Jersey. Um, so glad to, uh, to know that uh, we have some connections there as well. Uh, you, you, the family that you come from and the family that you are has deep roots. Um, your parents uh, were um, uh, from different countries uh, and they settled originally in the Bronx? Correct. That's right. Yeah, so mother is Italian, um, father Chilean. They met in Brazil where I happened to be born, but um, shortly thereafter, uh, we arrived in 1960 in, uh, in the Bronx. And you were there for the formative years, but you also transitioned over to Bergen County later. Yeah, I was in sixth grade so, um, when we moved to uh, Ridgefield mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, we were there for a few years and then finished up, I'd say, uh, by junior year of high school we had moved to uh, Oradell, and, uh, and we both attended Bergen Catholic High School yes. there, and, uh, and as you mentioned, that took me to St. Joe's, yes. and, uh, and Raul to Rutgers. So. Great, so it was an active household with a number of siblings, and probably some interesting cuisine between that blend between um, South American Chilean food and Italian food. Um, what was it like in the house, Raul? Was there a division of labor, or was it uh, mom well, was in charge of the kitchen, or dad dad stepped up? You know, it, interestingly enough, um, last week I think Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. the last Howard Johnsons finally closed in America. Hojo's. There, there were a thousand restaurants, yeah. and yeah, the, the one in Lake George was the final one that closed. Yeah. And so you're asking when we grew up, we my mother cooked all of our meals except for one at Howard Johnson's. <laughs> we, my dad, and, and it's only because my mother wasn't home. She, her father had passed away in Italy, my grandfather. So dad took us to Howard Johnson's <laughs> all-you-can-eat spaghetti. <laughs> and ice cream. On Route 46, and yeah. And ice cream. Yeah, and ice cream. That was the only time we ever ate out wow. as kids. Yeah. But mom cooked and everything was fresh and oh, yeah. Um, yeah. wasn't out of a can, it wasn't craft, no, 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 it wasn't, no, no, uh, yeah. oh, that's great, yeah. great. And Teresa's was her first, your first family uh, store, it was a delicatessen? Yes. Yeah, in Rockland County, so just over the Jersey border there uh, in Rockland County, New York, um, uh, she opened a, a deli called Teresa's. And uh, that's where we worked every summer, weekends, during school at times. So, uh, and you just take all of that for granted, right? All that, you're just assimilating and 
hard work, but you're learning the whole time. So mm -hmm. that's what we did. And uh, Carlo, you mentioned earlier also that Teresa's exists here in Princeton, the Teresa's Pizzeria, but it's not. He's Carlo. Yeah. Excuse me, <laughs> oh, Raul. Um, Raul. Um, yes, uh, I went to Rutgers, and like Carlo said, um, my mom that's, was our first experience in food service and working in her deli. Mm -hmm. And when I was at Rutgers, I was going into my senior year, and um, we, uh, I was working in different uh, student uh, um, centers, student halls, uh, dining, and I was selling pizzas and stuff. And my senior year, we wound up opening a business in New Brunswick. And it was pretty much just a, a copy of my mom's deli that she had the, uh, in, in New York. And it was called Teresa's. Teresa's, um, I guess, deli when it opened. <laughs> and then quickly became Teresa's Pizza Cafe. So and in New you, Brunswick, on, East New Brunswick. Avenue, on Eastern Avenue. And Raul, how long did that restaurant exist before? That was um, that was 1982. Uh, this year is 40 years. It's hard to imagine. And then uh, Raul, so you transitioned that to Princeton. Yes, uh, that's a, a year. common question everyone asks. Right? How did you get to Princeton? Right. It was uh, Teresa's was very successful in New Brunswick, and. Uh, uh, we essentially, because we were on a college campus, Princeton was another college campus, you know, 12, whatever, 13 miles down the road. That's pretty much was the, how it started in 1987. We opened on Nassau, Nassau Street, Teresa's. And so. Carlo, when you transitioned, uh, did you have a vision for something beyond just the pizzeria and cafe or? or delicatessen sort of flavor or did you have a vision uh, uh, at that point as to what this could grow to yeah no we weren't really um, so at that time in late 80s we were really only thinking about uh, how we could grow the pizza business so and if you recall all the the dominoes mm -hmm. I don't even think Papa John's existed yet mm -hmm. but they were they were all coming and coming hard, so uh, we were just trying to we were just trying to grow that part of the business. In fact, um, we wanted to be in Princeton so bad at the time, another college campus, and um, we bought a David's Cookie franchise mm -hmm. on Nassau Street and operated the pizza part of the business out of the back because we weren't allowed to put the si uh, Teresa signage in the front at that time. So cookies in the front, pizzas in the that, back. That's, that's, right. that's exactly how it started. That's how it started. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and who was it that influenced you two, um, Raul, in, 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 in that bigger vision? Was it just something that unfolded over time, or did you have mentors that you two um, looked towards or went to? We, we um, over the years, we, had, we had hired one uh, great marketing guy, um, like, Gene, I can't unfortunately can't remember his last name, but uh, he, he, we did some, you know, trying to kick as we were expanding, and he had he he captured the essence of like, oh, I get it. It's not how big you guys want to get; it's how good you want to get. So I think for us, you know, it was always about the quality of of you know what you do. Um, we were never really thinking how you know, as people scale in this business. How many locations? You know, um, it was always about uh, how can you push the quality, and I think that got us into the restaurant business, full service. So beyond cookies and pizza, right. into right. other exactly right. cuisine. Other cuisine. Yep. Yeah. So that that was kind of the the real really the, the the purpose that we had. It was all about quality and then in the restaurant business right it's not only the quality of the food and the ingredients but also the establishment the the uh, hospitality right the wine list you know everything the experience that Correct. a diner that uh, a guest has when they go and the relationship um, of the people on staff um, and your presence there both of you were present uh, in, in in those ventures from the start oh very much so yeah I mean those it's uh, <laughs> true. Anyone that that um, 
unfortunately, they over romanticize the business, and uh, it's but it's a lot of hours, a lot of work, and you often do those uh, do those hours when everyone else is off. So, you know, so it's 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 tough business. You so know, stopping service at eight, nine, ten o'clock at night doesn't mean that the business closes its doors and you get to go home. Well, no, that's right. That's right. Usually, um, a lot of behind the scenes work. Yeah. <coughs> well, the work that you've done is so cool. Um, I've been into your restaurant, as have many, and I get a vibe from the staff, particularly at Mediterra, that is very consistent. Uh, the staff is very well, is, is knowledgeable about the menu, and you ask questions and they give you details about the, f the freshness of, uh, of the ingredients and their uh, ties to the local community. Um, both the wait staff, but also then the food. So that's been an element that the two of you have sewn in. Raul, how, how was that something you did uh, again as you opened Mediterra? You began I to think, say this was. I mean, you're element. hitting the nail on the head, John. With you know the business, uh, people ask us all the time. You know, you, oh, you're so successful. How do you do it? And we always give the credit to the staff. That's really where how you build success in this industry is, you know, the, the people that are doing it for you. And you do you the best job to, you know, uh, take care of them, uh, mentor them, mm -hmm. you know, especially today in, in with what's going on in, in the, you know, the horror stories of labor in the workplace and, right, the great resignation. So we're very fortunate. We got through, that's how we got through COVID, was with a core group of you know, very loyal employees that have been with us, you know, many, many years. And um, it's, you essentially become family with these folks. Um, that's how much you care and take care of them. And your family, Raul, has three homes. Enoterra, which is up in Kingston, just north of town. Right, Enoterra, we have, uh, there's actually four, four restaurants and the bakery. Enoterra, Mediterra, uh, Teresa's on Palmer Square, which that that's the one that goes back, the oldest brand, Teresa's. And uh, the bakery, Terramomo Bakery, and Alberino, the one in Monmouth. Alberino is a newer member to the family, yes. but there's also going to be another member soon in Pennington. Yes, we're expanding also uh, on, in Pennington to be able to have a little more room to, to bake the quality you know, breads and stuff that we do. So those breads are distributed not only to the restaurants that you two oversee, but also others? It's no, to not, the not really. That's, that's yeah. a different business, wholesale. Mm -hmm. It's more uh, for ourselves, and it's artisanal, so we're, we're not set up for that. The wholesale bread business is a whole different thing. Essentially, our restaurants, farmer's markets, um, and retail, and for the, the, the public. So. Well, I, I appreciate you guys coming in. We have a little bit more time, but I'd like to take a break now uh, to get a message from our uh, marketing guru here, Tom McManaman and Stimulus Brand. But we'll be right back after a short break. I first learned about positioning in high school while playing football on a team that was just awful. In fact, we were 0-19. Coming into my senior year, we hired a new heralded coach and his staff. We were all pumped up for a fresh start, but we were physically the smallest team in the league. Each one of us had to raise our game and be the best that we could be. We worked hard through triple session practices, but how were we going to compete as a team and finally win? Our first game would be against a team of beasts. I mean, they were ready to just crush us. Our coach studied the other team. He took stock of their strengths, weaknesses, and tendencies, and he molded us into a speed and deception team. This was our position, our strategy to win. It was a hard fought game, one we ultimately won with a 40 yard field goal with no time left on the clock. That year, we went on to win our league and play for the state championship. To compete and be successful, you have to develop your talent, your skills, your business. 
Like any athlete, leader, or captain of industry, you've got to be excellent, more excellent than your competition. But that simply gets you in the game. Smart positioning helps you compete to win. Position your brand to win. Pick up a copy of my book, The Position Player, available on Amazon.com. Learn more at StimulusBrand.com. Mercer Local Influencers is an extension of the renowned Your Town Tube all local, all video newsletter emailed to thousands and where each member shares each other's content via social media. Join the revolution at YourTownTube.com. Mercer Local Influencers is powerful. Mercer Local Influencers, sharing is caring. Mercer Local Influencers, it's powerful. Mercer Local Influencers, sharing is caring. Mercer Influencers, sharing is caring. Mercer Local Influencers, powerful. Mercer Local Influencers, sharing is caring. Princeton Local Mercer Influencers, sharing is caring. adventure? How about a riverside walk? Or a catch in the park? Or maybe something closer to nature to bring you and the people you love closer together. Come visit us again soon. We've missed you. Mercer County is open for business. And we're back with our guests, Carlo and Raul Momo from Terra Momo Restaurant Group. Uh, before we took a break, we were talking about uh, the restaurants, the menus, the, the, the employees that you have, but also that ever-present theme that you seem to imbue within your restaurants, which is local sourcing of food. Um, Carlo, can you describe a little bit about the work that you do to source local produce, local um, poultry. Tell us a little bit about what you do to find who it is that's producing the quality of product and, um, and its local sourcing. Sure, well, uh, luckily a lot of them, the producers find us, so they, they, they'll, they'll come knocking and, and, and that's great because there's always a new farm, a new producer, a forager, whatever it is coming um, you know, coming to the restaurants and they, um, they'll show the chef and the chefs, the different chefs, you know, what, what's new, what they have and what's, what's local and uh, we always appreciate that. I mean, um, you know, we try not to, uh, it, it's, it's a very, very fine line between, um, you know, buying local and, uh, and, and saying on your menu that everything is local, you, you know, it, it's 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 a very difficult thing to to balance out because the realities of the business don't don't necessarily allow you to just you know stay true to just the local theme. So, but whenever possible, we try to we try to source stuff locally. So uh, uh, we we uh, the most recent example is this. Uh, this this young guy in uh, Trenton who started up this um, hydroponic farm in a in a warehouse and uh, I think the name is Geo Greens and we we just Teresa's is now featuring all his greens and um, going back to that delicate balance he's you know he's like you know he he wants to know exactly how much we're going to buy next week because he's he it, it's that. It's that tight with him to, uh, you know, to ramp up to determine how much he has to has to have ready for us and stuff. But it's uh, it's always fun to come across guys like that. Would it be great to see um, him be able to produce year round if he's growing hydroponic? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, he still he has the constraints of his space. It's not very big. It's not much bigger than these two rooms here, but. Uh, you know he's he's got the right attitude. So 
Well, yeah. if it goes well, I know we have some connections yeah. in Trenton we were talking about earlier right. where uh, he could find some more space. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of space in Trenton, uh, Raul, you told me earlier that uh, you've, you've got some ventures there. Tell me about, uh, tell us about what's happening in Trenton for you. Sure. Um, it was February of uh, 2020 when we acquired the building uh, on South Warren Street, mm -hmm. the old Maxine's location. Mm -hmm. And uh, March 15th or 16th, there was the lockdown. <laughs> and so we've been uh, sitting on that building and, and uh, trying to uh, restore it and reopen it and be part of, there's a lot going on in Trenton and it's, uh, Warren Street seems to be coming, uh, there's a, another bistro opening up, up the block. So it's, there's a burrito place that opened and of course the, the anchor, the famous 1911 smokehouse. The barbecue. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot going on there and, and we felt, you know, uh, it was very sad to us to see the, the all the tomato pie places that left Trenton. Trenton. Mm -hmm. So we said, you know, uh, we would like to create that story of bringing the tomato pie back into Trenton. At For Max the next generation. At Maxine's. Yeah. Oh, great. That's what we're, the, the goal is. And right now the challenge is, you know, it's a very large building in very bad condition. So we're going to, you know, reach out and, and try to get a, uh, the funding and, uh, uh, and really the skilled uh, contractors to fix the building and, and, and reopen it. Well, I know you're not doing this blindly, um, despite the circumstances of the last two years, you've become and, and have been involved, but have become more involved in the Trenton business community. Tell us a little bit about your work there. Yeah, they, they asked me to, uh, to because of the, the, the Maxine's project, um, to be part of the, uh, the T Trenton Downtown Association. Yes. And it's, uh, it, I've started, you know, it's my first year there. And a uh, great group of people that I've met and I'm working with now. Um, uh, and I'm looking forward to it, you know. Uh, it, it, it probably doesn't make any sense, but there's a lot of parallels between, you know, the, the business issues in Princeton uh, as well as the issues in Trenton. And I know that doesn't sound like it makes any sense, but, but there's a lot of parallels that, you know, what businesses need. And so I, I think that's... Uh, I can I can certainly bring that to to the table there. And I would dare say to use the phrase "people starve for" because we're not starving in Princeton, we're not starving in Trenton. Although uh, there are times where we look around and say, "Hey, what has happened?" You mentioned the tomato pie. What's happened in the cuisine world within a, a particular community that was rich in restaurants? years ago that has different flavors now, whether it's the Latino um, and South right. American flavors or Central American flavors um, and uh, the barbecues we talked about. So I, I think that that's great that you're working within that community, but your community work has expanded uh, within the, the Princeton region. Um, we ran into each other at a, a Music Together event, a beautiful event and celebrating uh, youth music in the area, but this isn't your first go-round. You've been involved in charitable work within the community for a while. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your work there, Carlo? Yeah, I mean, over the years, we've, um, we've always uh, been very supportive of the local community, and, you know, uh, I, just to name some, because we're, we will invariably leave some some someone that we've sponsored or or supported out, but you know the arts council, the uh, one table cafe. Um, I mean the, uh, the schools, you know, on all different levels. Whether it's uh, the the PT uh, PTO uh, organizations, for instance, school gardens, is it school gardens. So, so <coughs> there's very there's a lot of different um, entities we've uh, supported in the past and. Uh, Luckily, and yeah, you know, we were we were talking about this during the break. Luckily, um, uh, it, it came back um, in you know, and um, talk about paying it forward. It, it it really a lot of people felt during COVID when we were shut down and we were really struggling just to uh, 
just to pay bills. You know, we um, we found tremendous support in the community to help helping us at the time when we most desperately needed it. So, um, and uh, a prominent local lawyer did didn't mention that. Well, that's that's why that happened because you guys had, have historically been very supportive of the community. So he wasn't surprised at all that that the community supported us. And um, yeah, so we're we're uh, we're fortunate in that way, and it's a great community to be in. And uh, we look forward to being more supportive going forward. And it is a regional community that we live in. Uh, we spoke just moments ago about your work in Trenton, and, and I, I really think that that sort of reputation that you've built will uh, help on a regional basis and provide that sort of influence that we all seek. Um, an employee base um, and, and development is something we spoke of earlier, um, but obviously with your expansion within the Trenton market, it may include that at the point in time when you're ready to open the doors at Maxine's. It will retain the name Maxine's? That, the, that's still up for debate, um, but the, the sign will probably stay there yeah. <laughs> historically, yeah. yeah. So, um, you'll, you'll figure so out a Maxine, way. So I think Maxine's, yes, I think it'll always it's be there. It's iconic. Because you can't change that, that yeah. yeah. Right. The history there. Right. Yeah. So glad to have had this time with both of you today. Thank you for sharing all of the things that you've been through the last two years, but also right. throughout your careers. And we look forward to uh, hearing great news about uh, the, the bakery in Pennington, uh, as well as Maxine's, or whatever we will call it, when it opens yeah. in Trenton. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Thank Thanks you. for having us. You're welcome. Okay.